I'm going to talk about my wintergreen parka from Wintergreen in Ely, Minnesota. <laughs> this parka is the parka that I wore to the South Pole and to Greenland. Check out ironlinsdo.com slash Greenland so you can see the gear that I use in my extreme winter treks. But I want to show you why I chose this parka, why I spent the money on it, and why I have a fur ruff that looks pretty cool like this. Now, my buddy and I, Terry Williams, we skied across Greenland over 300 miles. You can see his fur ruff here on his parka, and I'll explain the differences in a minute about his parka and fur ruff design versus mine. But this wintergreen parka is super, super incredible. Now, unlike some of the other gear that I share with you on my channel, where I'm saying, okay, you don't need to spend a lot of money on this, the parka, okay, for me, I needed to spend a lot of money. My buddy Terry Williams, you can see his parka on there was not that expensive compared to mine. His fur ruff, we'll talk about in a moment, was different and that caused him problems. But for me, I wanted an anorak style parka. I mean, look how long this thing is. This literally goes not just below my butt, but halfway down my thigh. And I love it for this. This jacket has the double zipper, so if it gets super hot, I can actually unzip and ventilate so when I'm broiling. It's actually really, really nice. It has the classic Velcro sleeves here where you can put a big mitten, like no problem, suck that thing in. A lot of times what I actually do, instead of wearing a ridiculous mitten, if I'm messing around is I actually wear lighter gloves and then I seal this up and suck my hand in like this and it actually works very, very well. So that is a huge benefit there. Now, the jacket design, if I take off the fur ruff, check this out, pretty slick. I did not sew this fur ruff on. This was sewn on by Alaska Raw Fur Company. Let me show you what the parka generally looks like without the fur ruff. I can get it out of here without damaging it. Okay, there we go. So this is the parka without the fur ruff, and I am literally broiling in this room. It is 68 degrees, and I'm like, woo, super hot. And now I love the trim work that they have on this. It's very classic native design, and you've got a loop around. It is, got, now I added this actually, well, I didn't add this, my mom added this. She's much better at sewing than I am. She put a little clip on here, and then we uh, clipped this here because one of the problems is with the jacket design, the hood does this sort of thing. So I'm like, yeah, no, that's not gonna work. So what we did is we uh, put a clip on here and this is a modification that you can do. Let's see if we can even find it. Uh oh, did it just fall off? <laughs> um, hmm. well, let me take the jacket off and figure this out. I wanna show you in real time some of the problems I have with gear and struggling because sometimes things just happen. But the design of this jacket is such that, oh yeah, it did fall off. Oh, pff, there it is, sorry. <laughs> it's way up here. The original design had the hood lock that was up here, but I needed it way, way down here because this just didn't pull the hood back. So I've redesigned this and my mom actually sewed it there. But you can see that this zipper around here for the fur ruff was added by Alaska Raw Fur Company and I am not sponsored by Wintergreen. I am not sponsored by Alaska or Forever. Yeah, Alaska Raw Fur Company. If you want the ultimate in fur, <laughs> they are the company to get. And what I did to get this parka is I ordered it from Wintergreen and they drop shipped it to Alaska Raw Fur Company in Fairbanks, Alaska, where it's always freezing cold there and they actually put the fur ruff on here, sewed it correctly, so it works. Now, I'm gonna keep the fur ruff off for a minute so I can talk about the features of this jacket. Now, if you're going anywhere, you'll notice there's no insulation in this jacket in either, which I'll talk about in a moment, so stay tuned, don't <laughs> click away. But you can see that it has the draw cords on here, and unless it's raging, 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 I usually don't use those things. But as you can see, if I really, really needed to, I could draw this thing down and it would work fine. However, I never use those draw cords and now I'm going to show you why. The 
fur rough is a key integral part of polar exploration. And even when I've gone to Yellowstone in the winter, that is a critical part of my kit because, well, it's windy, it's cold, it's um, kind of rough there. And I'm going to show you if I ever have to take this off, what it takes to get it on. It's not that big a deal, so I just want to show you here. Usually I would do it off with the jacket, but I want to show you that it is possible to remove this. Now, one of the things about the fur rough is when you're traveling some countries have restrictions if the fur ruff is attached to your jacket you'll have no problems but if the fur ruff is detached from your jacket okay i'm not gonna be able to do this if the fur ruff is detached from your jacket you could actually have problems so do be aware that some countries have limitations and restrictions on there we go what you can travel with where you can go with fur so that's a thing now some of the people who are fur haters, let me tell you this. This fur is sustainably harvested by native Eskimo, I guess they call themselves Eskimo, tribes in Alaska. And this is part of their livelihood. So if you're not down with fur, I totally understand that. But the people who live in Greenland, they all wear fur ruffs, natural fur ruffs. This is Wolverine and the liner is beaver. I asked the lady at Alaska Ruffer, I can't remember her name, it's been like 12 years, if a musher was to choose the best fur, no holds barred, no price barred, what would she choose? And she said, well, Wolverine, of course, because it has a natural antifreeze in it, and the beaver is nice and rough. Now, it's a little bit prickly on the face, but that's okay. Now, the pockets of this jacket are super awesome. I can put my entire mitten in here, they're super, super huge. This does not have a removable liner, and that's okay. And this literally has no insulation. It has the shell here, and it has some sort of polyester liner. It does have a zipper pocket, but the liner is kind of light, so I wouldn't mess with it too much. I never really put anything in there. It's got a second zipper pocket here, and really nice, it has a snow skirt, so let me show you what the snow skirt does. Hopefully you're still watching. I, I never know what uh, people do. So, hey, just leave a comment in the video. I, I need uh, ideas for videos. So I've got a few ideas from some subscribers, including Bill Cole. Bill Cole, you are the man. Thank you for watching. But I have a snow skirt in this jacket. So I can actually pinch it like a skirt and prevent snow from coming up. But the jacket's so long, even in extreme winds, 60 miles an hour, I don't use it because the jacket works so well. It's got a couple touches of Velcro in different places. That's no big deal. But as you can see, it works very well. However, uh, here's the difference between Dr. Terry Williams' jacket and mine. When he puts his fur rough, it's sewn on the outside of his hood. And so when the wind comes from the side, it's not that big a deal. But his fur rough is just a decorative trim. This is actually designed to be a musher's ruff, and I'll show you why. I can zip this up, just like this, and then it's got Velcro on the bottom here, and I can Velcro this together, and I can literally create a microclimate where I was able to ski towards the South Pole in 50 knot winds, and I felt no wind in my face. The fur is just that magical. Some people use coyote fur and it's okay, but it just, it's not long enough and doesn't handle the raid. Uh, Wilbur Garcetier, she had coyote rough and seemed to do just fine. But what Terry couldn't do is what I could do is I can literally create this little hood of a tunnel and pull this straw way, way back. And I can literally walk into minus 40, minus 50 degree winds, blasting in my face and have no problem, like none. So even though it's extreme, it, this is a very expensive piece of kit. I think by the time I was done, I was pushing towards a thousand US dollars in 2012, no, 2010, ouch. But this style jacket is super, super nice. Can't recommend it enough. If you wanna do some extreme stuff, I love this. I did not get the pullover style wintergreen because if I need to unzip or cool down, which I really overheat a lot, some of my subscribers have mentioned that, and I just can't use a pullover, so I need a jacket to where 
I'm unzipped, I'm still skiing and it's raging. This is the jacket that I have literally bet my life on multiple times in polar climates, Yellowstone in the winter, super, super good. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel, aaronlinstow.com slash greenland to check out gear like this. Thanks.